All right, thank you and welcome everyone to the webinar today. My name is David Van Hookham and I'll be leading today's presentation and demonstration. Let's go ahead and get started. So the agenda for today is straightforward. I'm going to go through some brief introductions and I'm going to spend the majority of the webinar today showing a live demonstration of Crow Professional Services Automation. So who is Crow, P Crow Software and Crow Professional Service Automation? Well, Crow PSA is the easiest way to manage professional services with one unified platform today. Starting from managing your customers and your accounts to services CPQ, or more specifically managing services proposals and contracts through to project and task management, resource planning, staffing, time and expense management, project accounting, billing and invoicing, revenue recognition, customer and partner communities, and all the way through to providing the project and services analytics and reporting that your organization needs to run your services business. All built 100% native on the industry's leading cloud platform from Salesforce. So this is what Crow offers today, a unified solution for managing your professional services business. And we're very pleased to uh, have a number of, of, of really great customers today. As you can see here, really uh, high growth firms are choosing Crow uh, as their backbone to manage their professional services business across a number of different industries. I'm sure a lot of logos and customers that you might be familiar with here today, whether it be software companies that are professional services arm of the software uh, company itself consulting, IT consulting, management, professional services business, obviously, um, uh, healthcare organizations, agencies, uh, a number of industries that are using Crow PSA to manage their services business today, uh, really across the globe. And proving customer satisfaction. So our customers have really been great in providing uh, feedback uh, to uh, various sites, uh, G2 Crowd, if you're familiar with that, as well as Salesforce App Exchange as well. So G2 Crowd, based on our customer reviews, recently rated Crow as its top and highest overall usability in professional service automation in their spring 2017 report. Uh, we are also the winner of best meeting requirements, easiest to use, and easiest to administer PSA application uh, based on customer reviews of applications. So we're really proud uh, that we've uh, received this uh, rating from GT Crowd and more specifically that uh, the customer success and our customers that um, using Crow PSA every day to manage their services business. So a little bit about Crow Professional Service Automation, and you're going to see this in the demonstration today. So number one is we've really focused on managing the services business um, for all users, not just consultants and project management project managers, but even customers or partners uh, in a simple and intuitive user experience. For those that are using Salesforce today, it's optimized for Salesforce Lightning, although it still supports Salesforce Classic as well, and that really allows us to deliver that great user experience for all stakeholders. Uh, Crow PSA is partner integrated, so we know that our application alone does not support your entire services process. So specifically, we seamlessly integrate with accounting products, productivity applications, such as the ones that you see here on the slide, such as if you're uh, using Intact Accounting or NetSuite or Sage Live, uh, QuickBooks, whether it be online or on-premise, Zero today, we, we deliver real-time integration, supported integration from us uh, with our application today to send all of that project and billing data uh, over to your accounting system seamlessly. Uh, we also integrate with productivity applications, whether it be Jira, Zendesk, Slack, um, and others, uh, that we provide that integration to help you, again, manage your overall business. So finally, why are companies selecting Crow to manage their professional services business today? So number one, we offer this complete suite in one unified solution built on the number one cloud platform available today. Uh, number two, it's easy to use and adopt, and hopefully you'll see that uh, in the demonstration uh, today. Really focused on delivering a application that's feature rich, but also has a great user experience that users expect today, all types of users. 
and that's really where we focused on on delivering Crow. It's faster, so we have a rapid innovation cycle. We do monthly release updates, so we're rapidly innovating, and upwards of uh, anywhere from sixty to eighty percent, depending on the release, are customer driven enhancements and new features that our customers are asking us for. Uh, the partner ecosystem that we've created across uh, Crow, as I mentioned. So whatever accounting system you're using, productivity application, obviously it's 100% native on Salesforce as well. We deliver those real-time integrations as part of the overall Crow solution. And then finally, we're focused on delivering a easy to use, but also easy to implement uh, and low to to lower total cost of ownership solution. So we can implement and provide our our customers an application that they can use in weeks, in a few months, instead of a year, um, uh, like some of our competitive solutions today. So really focused on delivering a low deployment risk and a, a really quick payback and seeing value from our solution very quickly. So these are the reasons why companies are selecting Crow PSA today. So with that, let's dive right into a demonstration of Crow Professional Service Automation. So the demonstration we're going to see today is really the life cycle of managing a project as part of uh, your services business. So we're going to start right from looking at an account, creating a proposal, creating an associated contract, and managing that project and doing resource planning against that project. And once we have that project uh, active, ready to go, we can start managing that project, entering time and expense, generating invoicing and billing, recognizing revenue, and then finally seeing the underlying analytics and the impact of that and all of the projects within the business. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So hopefully everyone can see the browser in front of them. I'm logged into Crow Professional Services Automation now. And as I'm logged into the application, I've decided to start off my day on one of my dashboards. So here I'm looking at my project health dashboard. Uh, immediately I can see my projects by status, overdue projects, timesheets pending approval, tasks by status, overdue tasks by project, overdue tasks by owner or resource, if you will, outstanding issues by project, outstanding risks by project, expenses pending approval. So it gives me an immediate insight into, you know, where are my projects, whether I be an executive project manager or maybe even just a consultant that's working on many projects today. I could have decided to start with another dashboard or maybe even start with uh, the my projects page as we call it which is really just a listing of my projects uh, and then I can drill down into a specific project and start managing all of those project details. So the purpose of, for the purpose of this demonstration though as I mentioned we're really going to start from the top and what I mean by that is what I'm going to do now is I'm going to navigate to a customer or an account as it's called in Crow and in Salesforce uh, in this Acme account that I'm looking at now uh, this is part of the Crow Professional Service Automation product, but if you're also a Salesforce customer, this is the same account record, opportunity record that is within Salesforce today. Uh, when I look at this account record, of course, from a sales perspective, I can see all the contacts and the opportunities on this account or support cases. But now, with Crow being 100% native on Salesforce, I can immediately see the status of my projects, whether they be in planning, in progress, or even completed pro uh, projects. I can see now, right from sales to service delivery, a 360 degree view of my customer, including not only opportunities, but also projects and support cases and so forth within one view. And here I can see my client implementation project. This is the project I'm going to be focused on today. And if I click in on this project, depending on my level of access as a user, I can then see more details around this project, such as all of the overall information, project financials, as you can see here. Uh, and then I can even drill down into all related information we're tracking against the project, whether it be project assignments, tasks, timesheets, invoices, risks, issues, billings, purchase orders, proposals, baselines, so on and so forth. And then, of course, I've also embedded some embedded reports right here that I can see as well when looking at this project. But in this example, before I go further, so in this account for Acme, uh, there's a new project that we're going to be proposing for them. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to first create a new proposal. So what I can do now is I'm going to go ahead and select my proposal tab, and I'm going to create a new proposal. And it's for my Acme account. 
And I can create a proposal from scratch, but instead I can select a project that's in planning or maybe a project template as a starting point for my proposal. And that's all I need to enter. There's some additional fields I can enter as well, but for the purpose of today's demonstration, I'm just going to enter that information. And now I come to my proposal screen. So from here, I can start creating what's called proposal lines, meaning that I can add resources and roles and hours and rates. I can add fixed fee items. Uh, of course, I don't necessarily want to do that from scratch. I've associated this project, again, it might be a project in planning for this account, might be a project template. Uh, by associating that project, though, I can go ahead and import from project by selecting this button. So what the system is going to do is it's automatically going to pull in project or proposal lines, I should say, from the project, summarizing certain data, such as uh, summarizing by role or resources, hours, proposed amount based on bill rates and cost rates. I can see certain information here in my view. If I edit this particular line, you can see the additional information that's being tracked, such as the bill rates, the cost rates, the hours, um, margin information related to the specific um, uh, role as project director, and so on and so forth. Okay? So at this point, what I can do is I can add more uh, proposal lines, such as a, if I want to propose a new resource or a new placeholder role uh, with a bill rate and a cost rate and hours and so forth. What I can also do, um, if I just refresh this for a moment, so as soon as I've done that, it's just updated any changes that I've made to this proposal. So now you can see here it's showing me what the current margin percentage is and margin amount, expected revenue, budgeted cost based on what my current proposal lines look like. As I mentioned, it looks like I have a 44% margin percentage right now. Maybe I want to try to get above 50 so what I can do here is just edit this particular pro proposal line, and I see the bill rate's at 150 right now. Let's just try if I increase that to 250 and click Save. I might also decide to, you know what, I'm going to add a $5,000 fixed fee item for software delivered. Okay, and this is going to be a fixed fee item, and I can save that. So I can make a number of changes to the proposal, uh, and again, if I just refresh that here, so now I can see I'm at 69% margin, So, uh, and it looks like this is my margin amount. Looks great to me. Uh, looks like I want to try to propose this to the customer and see if they're okay with that. Uh, before I go any further, the one other thing that I'll mention is that um, you have the option to modify your proposal lines right on our proposal object or if you want to get into the real task scheduling that we'll see a little bit later on the project itself you can always make those changes directly on the project and then just re-import from the project and any changes that you've made on the project will be here or what I can also do is as you can see we have this button called sync project so any project or any changes that I've made to the proposal or to the project, I can synchronize to make sure that they're always obviously in sync as far as my proposal is concerned. So that's what we call sync project. And a lot of the times what our customers will do is they might create a couple of project proposals, one or two, and 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 uh, communicate that to the, to the client or the prospect. And once they've confirm this is the proposal they want to move forward with, then we can move this to client accepted. And when that's moved to client accepted, then at that time, I can sync back to the project. So now the accepted proposal and the rates and, and so forth within this proposal, I now want to sync back to that project because this is going to be now my active project that I'm going to carry forward with this client. What I can also do is I can immediately generate a proposal. So we have pre-built integration, including pre-built templates with Conga. Um, and if you already use Conga, you can use it with Crow or you can license it from, from Crow directly for the purpose of Crow, which is to generate proposals or statement of works based on proposal line items, which is completely template based. And you can add any additional information to the proposal. We also use Conga for status report updates as well. But once the client has accepted this particular proposal, what I can do now is I can automatically create a contract. So this is part of our uh, recently released functionality around services contract or contract management. So now if I go ahead and create a contract, so it's automatically going to create a contract from my proposal. And if I go ahead and look at this contract now, so now I have this contract. It's currently in draft now, but I can move this forward in the approval process based on your business rules. But I've created the services contract, and you can see it's automatically created this contract line for me for this client implementation project on the account. 
uh, time and expense billing type based on the proposal that I created. Here's the contract line amount as well. And there's more information, of course, that uh, is within this contract line if I go ahead and look at it, such as the revenue template. So this is the revenue recognition and how I'm recognizing this contract line, this time and expense project, specifically per percentage of complete costs is what this is pertaining to. Okay, and it's a time and expense project, as I mentioned. So what I can do now is I can also generate a an actual contract, uh, but you might be doing that within Salesforce or maybe outside of the system. But regardless, the real benefit here of creating a contract now is, is when you have change requests or even new projects that you are appending or associating to the existing contract. So as an example, here I can see I have my contract line for the proposal that was accepted Okay, for this time and expense project. And later, and we're going to see this in billing, by the way, for the same client implementation, maybe later there was a change request. And this can be automatically created, but I'm going to just do it manually. There was a $5,000 fixed fee item that I'm managing here against that same project, okay, for that same account. And maybe I'm going to recognize this uh, this change request differently than how I recognized it before. The initial time and expense project I recognize based on percentage complete. This fixed fee item for this project I'm recognizing based on what we call billing event, which is basically if you're invoicing it up front, you're going to recognize that revenue up front as well. Okay, I can add again more information around that, but I'm just going to go ahead and save that. So now I've got two items related to this contract. I have a time and expense contract line item at uh, a time and expense billing, as well as a percentage complete revenue recognition uh, uh, method. And then I have a fixed fee item at a different billing type, obviously fixed fee, um, in the associated revenue recognition uh, method, if you will. And later when we get to billing, and I'll remind you at that point in time, we're going to see there that we actually have two different billings that we've created for this project, a fixed fee item as well as a time and expense against this project, using, of course, two different billing types. So uh, in summary, this is an example of creating a contract and appending that contract based on change requests as an example, or even new uh, uh, new contract line items that represent different amounts, different billing types, uh, different revenue recognition methods against the same contract. And, and finally, this is an example of, a, of I created two contract lines against the same project. I can create a third contract line against another project so that you have multiple projects against a contract for an account that are all summarized into an overall contract value. So this allows you to do that as well. And then on the contract, I can see uh, the summarization of all of the, the billing, the revenue and so forth associated with this one contract that might make up multiple projects. So with that, uh, let's just say, of course, that it's been approved, it's active. Um, I'm ready to go with, I've created my proposal, I've created my contract, and of course, my project is now active. So now with that project active, I can go back to my projects page, and I can start managing my project. So the first thing I'm going to do is you can see I have my list of projects here, and I can see them in a, in a card view as well, and I can uh, filter uh, the projects that I'm looking at, as you can see here, and I can just drill into a project. And now I'm actually managing projects. So Crow Professional Service Automation is a full project task management and scheduling tool as well. So here I can see all of the tasks within my particular project and the status of having any time entered against tasks, the duration, progress against those tasks, who's working those particular tasks, any milestones. I have a milestone here, as you can see. And then I can start managing this project by doing various things such as Immediately, maybe I want to open up this embedded analytic, and I can see, well, where are we with this project? What's the percentage complete? What are my hours look like? What's the burn rate look like? What's the margin look like? And this is completely configurable based on business rules and how you want to represent margin and burn, okay? Which could be based on billing or invoicing, could be based on estimated project hours, scheduled hours, and so forth. Uh, what I can also do is I can start managing these tasks right from my project. So specifically, I'm looking at this first task, and I can click on it, and it opens up this right-hand panel for me, where now I can immediately see who's scheduled on this task and when they're scheduled. We're going to see an easy way to do scheduling right from the resource planner in a little bit, but I can also just manually put in the scheduled hours or the effort uh, against particular roles and resources for this particular tasks. Um, I can also search for available resources. I can click on this too and see what the actual time is and actuals against this particular uh, task as well. 
And I can manage this task right from here in the scheduling of this task. I can collaborate and reach out to others using Chatter or the collaboration mechanism uh, within the application itself. And I can post this, and this will be posted, and it could be posted uh, to my customers as well. If I have my customer community active, I can add files. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can enter time as I'm working the project and working this particular task. You can see here, I already started up my timer about one hour and 24 minutes ago as I was working this particular task. I can pause this if I'm going on a webinar like I'm delivering now and then when I'm done, if I'm gonna be working on that task again, I can start up that timer again and start again working on the particular task. And then when I'm done, I can just stop that. It's gonna default that information for me and I can just save that. And that's gonna add time against that task for me. And later when we see my timesheet, that time that I entered against the task will be right there. So this is just an easy way to add time. It's all saved in the same place, but I didn't have to navigate away to the My Timesheet tab. I can enter it uh, or enter time as I'm working the task. I didn't have to use the timer. I could just manually enter the time uh, right here as well if I wanted to. This is completely available from a mobile device, so you can enter time from mobile expenses, manage the entire project uh, process from a, a mobile application as well. What I can also do, of course, this being a project, is I can switch over to the Gantt chart. So now we're going to take a look at the Gantt chart for this particular project. Uh, and it's automatically going to drill down into a view uh, that shows me uh, in the lowest level detail the entire project. So here I can see my project. I have a lot of uh, dependencies, as you can see here, predecessors. Um, what I can do here is I can just click on a task and I can schedule right from here and enter time right from this view as well. Uh, of course, if I want to add new tasks or edit tasks, I can do that. Uh, and then, of course, with all of these uh, uh, dependent predecessors, I can just drag out. If I'm moving out a particular task, it's going to uh, move out this task for me. You can see in this example, skipping Saturday and Sunday for me uh, based on configuration rules. I can also add a lot more columns like the work breakdown structure and so forth to my project here. And when I add more columns, I can save my view. Uh, so the next time I come back into my Gantt view, it, it uh, keeps where I left off. I can create baseline. So you can create a full baseline of project and task data. I can create as many baselines as I want. One is going to be the actual baseline, and then I can create as many snapshots. I can re-baseline at any point in time as well. Okay. Back to my project activity for a moment. I'm not going to save those changes. So now what I want to do is I'm working on this new client project that was approved and I'm managing my tasks and in my Gantt chart, but also I need to plan the resources on this project. So if I go to the resource planner view, and the resource planner view I'm looking at now is just for this particular project, not the overall resource plan for all of my projects, which I'm going to see in, in, in a little bit. But right now I'm looking at you know my two resources on this project and scheduled time. Uh, this blue color represents that they're currently booked on this project. Uh, but what I can do is, here you can see this blue silhouette. This blue silhouette represents a placeholder. And this placeholder means that uh, I might have put in an, an actual resource as a placeholder or uh, just a role placeholder like project manager and so forth. So you can use placeholders throughout the application. You can even enter time for placeholders, add placeholders on project templates and so forth. But here what I can do is I could maybe immediately swap out this resource for someone else if I know uh, who I want to swap out the resource for. But if I don't, we can create what's called a resource request. So I created a resource request for this placeholder here. And if I click on this resource request, I now come to the resource request tab, if you will, for this particular resource request. So this is an example of I may be the project manager and I have access to this resource request. You might have a centralized resource planning uh, process whereby you have a centralized planner uh, that will uh, uh, manage all incoming resource requests, if you will. But when they manage this and, and, and review this resource request, here I can see I'm looking on this project. I'm looking for a developer, lead developer for the duration of August for 160 hours. Right now, I have no applications proposed against this resource request. But what I've also done, as you can see here, is I've actually created a job order. Uh, and specifically, this is part of our, our recruiting or talent acquisition component where I can create a internal and or external or both job requisition or job posting for this particular position on this project where either A, 
internal resources or partners through the partner community, or even external uh, through your website, uh, such as external candidates can apply for this particular resource request. And then, of course, I'm going to see those applicants show up here as well. We're going to see that just in a moment. But first, what I can do is if I go ahead and click on search resources. So when I'm clicking on search resources, the first thing that it's doing is it's trying to match up potential available resources uh, where the role of developer or lead developer matches the role that I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, I can further filter this by a number of different elements like role and skills and teams and location. I, I can even remove the filter. So I just want to expand the view and I can see what their availability might look like during this time frame. What I can also do is I can choose, let me choose, uh, well, this person, this person, this person, and then I can compare those resources. And as I'm comparing those resources, so here I can compare and look at all of the resources and see additional information around these resources as I'm making the decision of who I might want to propose or book on a particular resource request. So I can see as an example, Mitt here looks like he's got some good skills and skills proficiency here. Uh, available hours, I'm looking for 160. It looks like he's available 137 hours based on his current scheduled project time. This is his bill rate and cost rate. So I can, uh, you know, evaluate a bit. He looks like he might be a good candidate. Um, it looks like this this person here has got the available hours, might not have the skills that I'm looking for, but maybe I want to propose this person and propose a MIT as well. And then if I go back, I can continue to to search and 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 filter again, or I can move right back to my resource request. And now I'm going to have my two applications. Um, and their status of proposed. And this is where I can review them in more detail. Others can be involved in the workflow and I can move uh, an individual and book them. And once I book that particular resource, as you can see here, I can accept this resource. And as soon as I do that, it's going to uh, book that a resource on the project and closing that resource request. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I created a job order as well. So if I wanted external candidates, if I just move over to my project search, so this is the internal page to re internal resources or maybe to partners where they can see a list of current openings um, and I can search. So I'm looking for a, a developer is what I'm interested in and filter that resource or that search. You can see a little bit more information about it, the hours it's looking for, a description of it. And then I can go ahead and apply for this particular uh, position as well. And as I'm an internal resource, it knows who I am. And it's going to default that information into my application automatically. I can upload my resume. I can apply for that particular position as well. And then when I do that, if I go back to my resource request, uh, that uh, application will be there for any candidates. And then I can filter on showing all resources, including candidates. Maybe I just want to look at candidates as well. So that's part of the, the talent acquisition process. But in this example, I've created my resource request. I fulfilled my resource request, and I can uh, really start uh, managing this project now that I have the full team on this particular project, this client implementation project that I'm working on. So the next step is uh, I'm managing my Gantt and my tasks. I can even add new tasks by simply just saying new task and clicking enter. It's going to add a new task to my project that you'll see here. Here it is, and then I can just drag and drop wherever I like this. So maybe it's going to uh, be a subset of training. I can just drag this to the right. It becomes a subtask. We can have a unlimited levels and numbers of subtasks, and I'll just say, call this one train the trainer. Okay, and then I can manipulate those dates, and those dates are going to update the parent task dates and so forth. But for the purpose of today's demonstration, as a project manager, I might be managing my project. Now, as a consultant, I want to manage all of my tasks. I want to start entering time against this project. Later, we're going to see overall resource planning as well. But if I just move now from this project view, and I'm going to just switch gears for a moment and look at uh, a tab that we call My Work. So this is an example of if I was looking at my projects as kind of bot or top down, if you will. Now I'm looking at as a consultant or even a project manager, bottom up of what's everything that I'm working on. Uh, for our customers, usually those resources are working on multiple projects at one time, whether it be internal or external resources. So here, when I access my work, I can immediately see all of the tasks across different projects that I'm working on. And I can see new tasks that have been assigned to me or that I've assigned, ones I'm working on, priority to work on next, ones that are complete. And I can drag and drop as I'm working those tasks. I can add a new task if I have the ability to do so. We can manage both project and non-project related tasks here. 
Uh, if I click on a particular task, it opens up that same side panel that we saw before. So I can update scheduling, add time, and so forth against this particular task. And this is my default view, as I set. We call this the card view or the Kanban view. Um, I might want to see my uh, task by due date. So what's overdue versus today, this week, next week, and later. And if that was my preferred view, maybe I want to set that one as my default view every time I come back into my work. Or maybe I want to use the calendar view. So this is the calendar view that I prefer, as you can see here. Uh, maybe I want the what we call the to-do view. So similar to the card view, but looks a little bit different. Um, and I can still drag and drop from this view as well. But if I go back to the card view just for a moment, what I can also do here, in addition to working those tasks, is I can easily find tasks, right? So looking for data. So as soon as I start entering, it's starting to uh, filter the tasks that I'm looking for uh, during data entry here. And if I just remove that, it's going to come back. And then there's a lot of different filtering that I can do as a consultant. So I want to look at today's tasks, personal tasks, my team's tasks, project tasks, and I can choose one or many projects that I'm working on and filter those tasks. Uh, filter by task owner, by priority, um, active tasks, and so forth. So a lot of different filtering capability uh, available to me as I'm working my particular project-related tasks. This is a very popular view for our customers where they might be starting their day on my work and clicking on a particular task and then entering time on the task as they're working it, uh, even starting the timer. So they can very quickly move to completed tasks, enter time against many tasks as they're working those tasks throughout the day. Otherwise, those users might be coming in and just entering in their timesheets. So as I come into my timesheet here, you can see that time that I entered right on the project is showing up here. I can add new time by selecting the projects that I have access to, uh, that I'm assigned to, and I can see the, the task formats here. Uh, just choose a task and put in hours. I can put in my notes here and save. So I've saved the timesheet line. I can add a new line here continue to add projects that I'm working on, tasks that I'm working on. Again, add time here, notes, save that, and eventually submit that as well. So one thing around our timesheets, again, as I mentioned, this is available from a mobile device, but it's completely flexible across the application. One of the benefits of being on the platform is its configurability. I can add new fields to projects, add new fields to tasks. I can even add new fields to my timesheet layout. In this example, I'm adding uh, time against projects and tasks. You can add time only against projects. I can add time against accounts, custom fields, cases. is very popular for our customers to enter time against support cases in Salesforce, opportunities, anything that you wish. You can add more columns to this view. We can also, based on our latest release, you can enter in punch time. Instead of entering in time uh, like we're depicting here, I can punch in and punch out. Again, available from a mobile device. We have other customers that there's just one column here represents how much time for the entire week against this project. It's one column. So completely configurable um, a view of entering in time. So with that, I've entered in time. I've been managing my tasks. Uh, then from a uh, a more planning view, I've navigated to my resource planner. So now I can see, well, what's going on within the organization. I've got many resources. I've got many projects. They're entering in time. They're scheduling themselves against tasks, as I mentioned. So now I want to just move over to my overall resource planner. So here I'm getting a high-level view of all of my resources. If I drill down on Jane, I can see all of the projects that Jane is working on. These are color-coded based on project status. Uh, which are, are configurable by you. So the color coding here, project status, the color coding of my project assignments, this blue color here right now is depicted as booked. This gold color right now is depicted as soft booked. Again, these are all configurable by you during implementation as to how you want to represent different types of project assignment status. So here I'm looking at all of my projects. Immediately I can see for Jane, the first row represents time off. So we have a full time off component tracking of holidays and here I can see on the 28th the week of the 28th looks like she's off for a few days of time off which is probably why she's over scheduled at the moment based on her time off uh, I can see all the projects and what time she's been scheduled on these projects okay uh, if you see this cell here that has two rows this represents planned versus actual time based on time entry I can filter that off, by the way, at any time just by checking this filter. It's going to remove my actual, so I just want to look at my plan. But if I turn that back on, it's going to again show me my actuals based on time entry. 
I can, of course, add time to a project just by dragging and dropping. Okay, so I can drag and drop, and then I can add time right to her schedule from here. Um, I can also just click on this button here, and then I can add time against this project, uh, whether it be cap or up project hours, put in a percentage effort of her work schedule between certain dates. I can even manipulate it by day over the period that I've selected. So it's just going to be eight hours, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Actually, there's going to be no hours on Thursday and Friday, but I do want to cap her at 100 hours on this project, as well as cap her on 25% of her standard effort uh, on a daily basis. So all of those options available to me. Uh, what I can also do is if I just collapse this for a moment, uh, I'm looking at what we're calling project plan time. I can switch this over to schedule time. So now what I'm looking at is actual task level schedule. So I can drill down not only from the project, but now right down to the tasks that emit has been assigned. And I can see what time has been scheduled on a task level basis uh, for emit. I can also use this little info here to see additional information such as what is the plan versus schedule time against this project. And similar to what we saw before in the plan time, I can drag and drop and add more task scheduled time to this resource, or I can click on this edit button here, bring me to that scheduled view that we saw on the previous project task view, and I can do some scheduling from here as well. I can also see uh, others that are scheduled on the, this particular task, and I can also search for resources to assign uh, this task right from here as well. Um, I'm viewing this from the uh, uh, view of resources. I can switch over if I just want to view it by project. So I just want to see resources underneath a specific project instead of by resource. So uh, I can manipulate my view as well, uh, move to different views. So I want to view it by month. I want to view uh, my schedule by day. If I go back to plan, you can see more information, but by day now. Okay. What I can also do, I'll just move back to week for a moment, is I've looked at plan and schedule. I can also look at availability. So I'm most interested in what's their availability. So it looks like a has got some availability. I can see what his availability is on certain projects. I can start scheduling him this way. I can also look at utilization. Based on utilization targets and how you represent utilization, I'll just go back in time here, a little bit more utilization here. So here if I look at Jane, I can also see where this utilization was derived from. So which projects actually in which hours constituted what her utilization is. Now, I probably want to see utilization not in hours, but in percentage, right? So if I just switch over here, now I can see the utilization in percentage. So what is her utilization? 12% this week. So that's obviously under 138% utilization. Obviously green, that's over her schedule or target utilization as well. Uh, we have a lot of sophistication reports around utilization, but this gives a immediate insight into what's the utilization trend as I'm looking at my, my resource planner. Moving on, uh, just quickly on task planner. This is another view we have. Uh, this is uh, uh, highly used, uh, especially with agencies like marketing agencies where they're working on uh, a lot of fine grain, smaller duration tasks that they want to divvy up between the creative teams, as an example. So this is where I can see what all tasks everyone's working on and the assigned tasks, and I can drag and drop based on people's availability. Maybe I want to move this task to another date or to another resource, so I can easily do that as well just by dragging and dropping and see what every, everyone's working on. OK, uh, actually, one thing that you can do on both the task and resource planner that I neglected to show is, of course, uh, I want to filter. Right. So I'm looking at all resources, but I want to might want to filter by teams, by queue, by resource, by project, by project status, by customer search, by roles and skills and so forth to further filter my resource view here. So I'm managing projects. Um, I've, I've managed tasks. I've entered time against these projects. I can enter expenses. But now I want to go ahead and generate an invoice. So now I can just navigate to generate an invoice, and of course this might be the um, the uh, responsibility of a uh, of someone on the finance team uh, that would have access to this tab and no one else. But in this case, I can generate invoices. I'm going to do my August, my monthly invoices for August, and I can do this by project, by account as well, instead of by project. So you can have multiple projects against one invoice for an account. But I'm just going to go and search for this time period here. So now the system is automatically going to bring back any unbilled activity that has billing uh, for in for August in this example that I need to build. So I've got my projects here. Now I want you to take note of my client implementation project. So you'll notice two things. First off is I have time based on my time and expense portion of this project. I have 20 hours with an 1800 total amount. Okay, do. 
I also have a fixed fee amount for $5,000. So if you recall, when I added that new contract line representing that $5,000 fixed fee billing. So I have two types of billing now, two types of contract elements related to this particular project that are available to bill based on my business rules. So I can go ahead and just select that project. I can select all, but in this example, I'm just going to select this one and click create invoice. And it's going to create all of my invoices for me in this example, just the one invoice that I created. And now I can go ahead and take a look at this invoice. Now, for those that are integrating to accounting systems that we deliver, as I mentioned at the top of the presentation, um, you can decide to just send those billing events over to your accounting system and invoice from there, or you can invoice from our system and still get that data over to your accounting system. It's your choice. So here I'm looking at the invoice that I've generated. Um, I can see some invoicing details. And all of these invoicing parameters and the invoicing formatting that you can see here was derived from my organization. So we support what's called multi-org. You might have different organizations or different entities in different regions. And of course, if you've got uh, a, a corporate location in uh, the UK versus in the United States, currency is going to be different, date format is going to be different, taxation is going to be different. So that can all be de defaulted in based on the organization setup. And I can even override that at an account level. So as an example, for this particular account of Acme, you have negotiated that your standard payment of 30 days is being ex expanded to net 60 days. And if you've done that on the account side, it will take that into consideration when the invoice has been created. So this payment schedule will be net 60 instead of next, uh, net 30. So I put in Here's my invoice line items. Here's my fixed fee items. Excuse me. I can go ahead and preview that PDF. Uh, then I can email that e uh, uh, invoice that you saw immediately. So this is an example of my uh, uh, invoice. Now, this is configurable. I can add any uh, fields here, remove fields, add custom fields. I've decided, I've said that on page one of the invo invoice, I want to summarize it by project resource. Uh, and that is based on my configuration. So Jane, 20 hours on this project. Um, I see my overall. I didn't put a description for that fixed fee item, which is why it's not showing up here. But I can see my overall summary of my invoice. And then I said on my invoice template, starting on page two, the client would like a breakdown of all tasks as well as the timesheet notes, again, configurable to turn off or on, of what Jane worked on during this period of time. Okay, I can uh, show my expenses here. I can show my expense receipts on my invoice. But if I go ahead back to this invoice, I just want to override it right at the invoice level. So you know what? Uh, I don't want to group it. I don't want to summarize it by person. I just want to show you know totals only, and I'll just update that. And then if I go back and look at my uh, invoice now, now it's just a one-page invoice, summarize information only. Okay. So now I've created my invoice sent that off to the customer, and now I can recognize my revenue on these projects. So here I can look at all of my projects and uh, how I'm recognizing uh, revenue on these projects, uh, total revenue associated to the project, how much I previously recognized, how much is, uh, I have to currently recognize, if you will, and then I can go ahead and manipulate this and, and create what are called revenue recognition methods. So here I can, I can recognize in this example based on the calculation, 39,000, you know what, I'm just going to recognize 25,000 and I'm um, going to do this for August 31st re re revenue recognition. So I'm going to go ahead and create a transaction. So it's going to create a revenue recognition transaction. And now it's immediately updated saying you've got 14,000 left to recognize based on the current revenue recognition calculation uh, for this particular project. So that's just a quick snapshot of revenue recognition as well. So just in summary, just move over to my dashboard here for a moment. But in summary, we started off looking at an account in, in Crow or the same account in Salesforce. I created a new proposal. Uh, I manipulated that proposal and eventually sent that proposal and got it accepted by the customer. I then proceeded to create a contract for this project, including two contract lines, both a time and expense and a fixed fee component. Uh, then I started to do some planning for this uh, uh, project, and, and the project is now active. I started managing that project, uh, adding tasks, entering time against that project, generating an invoice against that project, recognizing revenue for that project. And now that I've done that, now I can start to look at the analytics and the reporting behind my services business across all of my projects. So if I now navigate to my project dashboard here, here I can see I'm looking at an example project financials dashboard and I can see my project margin summary, my revenue summary, estimated at completion, 
revenue recognition uh, by date and by region, deferred revenue, revenue backlog. What are my top projects by billings? What's my time and expense billing forecast look like? What's my invoice total for the year look like? Uh, and then we can move on maybe to another one. Let's look at uh, project health. So this is the one that we started off the demonstration with. Okay, so looking at my overall status of my projects and where they are. Uh, move over to another one, project summary. So now I can get an immediate insight into uh, what are the upcoming project starts? What are the upcoming project goal lives? What does my milestone forecast look like? What's my utilization trend look like by month, by resource, by role? Total time by project over a period of time. What's my estimated versus scheduled hours here? So this immediately tells me. It's a very high-level metric, and uh, most of our customers might want to manipulate this report, and you can create as many reports and dashboards as you want uh, and maybe break that down by region, practice, line of business, and so forth. But this overall tells me that um, I've estimated a certain amount of activity for my project, and I've scheduled a certain amount. And I've got a negative 932 here, which means that I have 932 hours that I've estimated that are left unscheduled. So I want to drill down and take a look at the details there and how I'm going to schedule that. And then I, overall, this is an overall metric saying average hour spent per project, not taking into consideration the type of project right now, which I can further refine. But right now I'm just looking at all of my projects, the estimated duration of those projects or estimated hours is 78 hours. Uh, for an average project and uh, that might be a low number that might be a high number and if I want to optimize that again I can uh, drill down into the details of any of these reports as you can see here uh, so here's an example of a utilization summary and I can drill down into the report view the report here see the details of that and even manipulate the report as well using the embedded dashboard and reporting tool that's inherent on the Salesforce platform that we, of course, utilize um, with Crow Professional Services Automation. So with that, hopefully that gave everyone today a good understanding of the Crow Professional Services Automation solution, uh, delivering that end-to-end -end solution to manage your services business, uh, all the way from account and opportunity management, creating proposals and contracts, managing projects and tasks, and task level scheduling, managing um, all of my time and expense, resource planning and task planning, generating billing and invoicing, recognizing that revenue, um, and then finally uh, delivering that 360 degree analytics and reporting uh, into the status uh, of your services business, all delivered in one platform, 100% native on Salesforce. So with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. If you have any questions or you'd like um, further information about Crow, please feel free to contact us at contact at crowsoftware.com or 1-844-GET-CROW. Uh, you can also um, uh, get a free trial uh, to test out Crow yourself uh, on the Salesforce App Exchange. So again, thanks everyone for attending today. Look forward to hearing from you soon.